at the time had Ellsworth had B-36s and so this was a whole new experience of course. Uh, again the, these were RB-36s. We had a, both a reconnaissance and a bombing mission to, uh, involved if we could or had to. And uh, the thing about the, the RBs was that they had taken the, the forward half of the front bomb bay and pressurized that to accommodate the, all the camera equipment. When I first got to Rapid City, the usual drill, they had a uh, ground training thing, got you all acquainted with the airplane as far as uh, the, the systems and there was no, no formal flight training program, it was just sort of integrated in with other, other flying. And uh, my first ride in a B-36, I, <laughs> I was in the left seat and flying, making a takeoff. And this airplane had just come out of uh, scheduled maintenance. And they usually did a, what they, a test flight after they had, they had done that. So this was a chance for me to get some flying experience in a B-36. And obviously the airplane was probably very light, didn't have a whole, didn't have a very big fuel load on it or anything. And uh, the takeoffs in a, a B-36 were always the same as a, you got out on the end of the runway and the engineer would uh, crank up all the recepts to take off power. And the, f the jets were up 100% and then you would kick the brakes off and off you'd go. And this airplane had a lot of power <laughs> compared to a B-29. And I just, we'd just gone down the runway a very short distance and this instructor pilot I was flying with, he says, get the nose up, get the nose up. And so I, I very gingerly started to come back on the yoke and no, no, pull the nose up. And, and I just come back, and I'd been used to flying B-29s. You know, you, you didn't, you didn't come back on a yoke real fast. The 29 just barely lifted off the ground, and you tried to ease it up in the air. Well, I, he suddenly he just he grabbed the yoke and does three and pulled it all the way back, and his gotten and the airplane went, it seemed like almost straight up. <laughs> and and I, all I could think of was my God, well, they were gonna burn and crash for sure. And this uh, 36 had so much power, it just, we just kept on going. We must have been, oh, five, six thousand 6,000 feet and altitude by the time we hit the end of the runway. But, and I, I'm sure <laughs> they enjoyed doing this to new pilots coming <laughs> on the base, scaring the hell out of them. <laughs> and with a fuel, full fuel load, you know, it was, you still made a pretty good takeoff run. Once you got airborne, uh, we'd, we'd usually climb out at maybe two, 3,000 feet a minute. So in short order, we were up to cruise altitude and, and, and going. And so yeah, was, the airplane had a lot of power and it would stay up in the air a long time. <laughs> it seemed like every summer we, we went to Guam, Anderson Air Force Base on TDY. We spent like three months there. There were four 36 bases that rotated in and out of there. One was, was Ellsworth, of course. And, uh, Biggs, Fairchild, and Travis. All of those four bases had 36 wings in them. And we had, I think, the summer slot when the weather was pretty warm there in the Pacific. But uh, one mission we came or on our way back, it was usually a non stop from Guam. You could almost surely rely on a slight tailwind coming across the Pacific because of the prevailing westerlies. But did we have that? No, we had a slight headwind. And it was just enough to make us run short of fuel. And 
we uh, we ended up landing in in Fairchild when we finally came into uh, back to the United States you know, to get some more fuel and flew the last that short leg from Fairchild in Spokane to Rapid City. But we were we went into long endurance crews within and max cruise <laughs> and every other kind of cruise you try to uh, ex extend the range and and uh, our fuel load and it just didn't work out uh, it would seem like at times you could practically count the propeller blades going by the engines were throttled back so far but, so we were flying at very low speeds a lot of times and uh, just uh, I think we finally landed at, at uh, Fairchild and we had like 36 hours in the air. And that's a long time to be airborne, unrefueled. Part of the reason they had a B-36 wing there at Anderson all the time was to be a, a deterrent to China doing anything like invading Taiwan or, but anyhow they, while we were there, at one time they they were threatening to invade the uh, a group of islands there called Matsu Islands, I think. And anyhow, we went on alert and we got out the airplane that had, that had already been loaded with ordnance. And anyhow, the bomb bays were full of. Uh, incendiary bombs, lots of them, wow. The B-36 had a lot of a, a big bomb bays and could carry a lot of ordnance. And uh, fortunately we, we were, we didn't have to go and call the mission off. Pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty impressive to see all that, that stuff in the bomb bay. Yeah, the, uh, the, the guns were 20 millimeter cannon. Uh, it's a pretty good sized uh, projectile and and bullet that the of course each uh, each turret had two guns mounted on it and so when you fired those uh, you could hear it I mean <laughs> it's like uh, trip hammers going off in the back uh, out there when they did those practice uh, uh, the bursts were very short you know maybe. Uh, <laughs> we used to fly down to uh, in the Texas area for some parts of our mission and uh, training missions, and uh, somewhere around there was a Navy base, and they 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 liked to occasionally try to come up and run pursuit curves on you, but we could evade them real easily. All we had to do is make a slight turn and. <laughs> they, they couldn't do much maneuvering at that altitude. They were pretty limited. We could fly at 40, 45,000 feet pretty easily. Then all those, the B-36 were run through a modification program they, they called feather weighting. And they took all the guns off except the tail turret. They took a lot of the so-called crew comforts out of the airplane, anything to cut the weight. And all of this was designed to allow the airplane to fly higher or and faster, uh, which was basically the best defense that the 36 had was uh, that that altitude. Unfortunately, that dissipated pretty <laughs> when the airplanes got, got equipped with air-to-air -air rockets and stuff like that later on. So, But at the time, it was uh, Pretty good defense. Uh, fly high, and and if somebody's chasing you a little bit, you 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 just alter your direction a little bit, and <laughs> they, they have a hard time compensating for that. My aircraft commander was a pretty good guy. I was you know, again because of my just having been in the service a short time. I was co-pilot on the airplane. I, actually, I was called a pilot. And the guy that really was the first pilot was the aircraft commander. That was what he usually would let me. We would alternate each mission. I would be the play like I was the aircraft commander on one mission, and 
he would and vice versa and back and forth that way. So I, I got pretty good amount of, amount of flying time on uh, 36 and I remember coming back from one mission and uh, I was flying. We got the, the weather conditions on the field, you know, and uh, I guess I should have really been uh, more alert to what that meant. But there was a very cross, strong crosswind across the runway, about 30, 40 knots. And, and I remember turning base and I, I knew immediately that was, there was no way that I was going to get lined up with the runway. And so we just, I just kept going, uh, made a go around, came around for a, another try at it. And this time I was, uh, had enough <laughs> smarts to make my turn on the final uh, quite a bit early compared to what you normally would do. And as it turned out, I rolled out and I was pretty much lined up with the runway. And uh, the way you flew a 36, uh, because of the, the engines being, the jet engines hanging out there on the pylon, you didn't use like a cross controlling to try to uh, compensate for uh, the crosswind. It just, you just flew the airplane in a, a yaw <laughs> direction to the, the, the runway. And, and then when you got close to touchdown, you'd try to swing the airplane around so the, the nose gear and stuff was heading down the front, down the center of the, of the runway. A little, a little tricky, but Anyhow, I <laughs> managed to get it down. Not a, what you'd call a hard landing, but it was a pretty good thumper, you know. And, and of course, all the, the enlisted guys gave me the what for area, harassed me about that. And then in 1955, in September again, <laughs> it seemed like everything, the markers in my flying our aviation career were all on September, but uh, I made a decision to get out of the Air Force and try to make use of my engineering degree and came to work for Boeing. So still in the aviation business and uh, stayed there the rest of my Boeing career.